draw your attention to an asymmetry here. It is a structural asymmetry, an asymmetry caused by the limitations of technology. Also, an asymmetry that emanated from the belief that mass or the crowd are largely consumers of communication and not it, its generators or producers. This is an asymmetry. Am I so too tough? Just follow it. It is a fact that out of this consuming mass, there sporadically emerge some producers of communication. If I am communicating as a corporate, if I am communicating as a government, if I am communicating as a charity, as an organization, as a political party, as an individual, I feel that the mass is not capable of communicating, is not capable of generating communication or producing communication. I am capable of. That is the asymmetry I am talking about. We communicate, but we do largely for somebody. All of us, we communicate. We communicate, but we do largely for somebody and rarely on our own behalf. Isn't it? Tomorrow if you join a newspaper, <coughs> if you join a charity, if you join a corporate, what do you communicate? Whom do you communicate for? You communicate for a hotel, you communicate for a software company, you communicate for a seed company, you communicate for a pharmacy company, you communicate for the United Nations, you communicate for government as I did for four years. That's what we do. A large body of communication by the mass is ruled out of the court. It is these entities that communicate continuously, not the other way around. By definition, mass communication by definition so far in practice has completely ruled out the communication from the other side. We are looking at the crowd, we are looking at the at the at the at the people, at the mass as consumers of our communication, not producers of communication. It is a fact that out of this consuming mass, they sporadically emerge some producers of communication, even from the mass sometimes. People come up. Immediately, what happens is that the system co-ops them. Oh, good. Come, come. Sadish Acharya, drawing cartoons from somewhere near Kullu, is published in, in Mumbai, in Delhi, in Hyderabad, everywhere. Yeah, come. They serve the dominant end of the asymmetrical or uneven or unequal lines of communication. Ultimately, isn't it? A large body of the communication by the mass is ruled out of the court. First of all, it doesn't merit consideration. When it does, sometimes, as I told you, as it does rarely, it is placed at the bottom of the hierarchy. After all these, what I listed, you know, sometimes somebody comes up at the bottom. Let me give you a very extreme and a glaring example. This illustration is from the admitted higher on the hierarchy forms of communication. Take the case of newspapers or television. A publication with headquarters in UDP is called a local publication, isn't it? The one which is headquarters, which has a headquarters in Bengaluru, 
is called state publication. The one which is headquartered in Delhi, national. The one which is headquartered in London, New York, international. Isn't it? This is there is still a hierarchy. When I was with the, when I used to be with the chief minister, somebody used to come and say, Sir, some national media people have come. National media. I said, What's national media? Sir, international media people. You know, they are from London, Paris, Washington, New York. Even California, San Francisco, also global. <laughs> Don't we hear TV anchors shouting in their 9 p.m. shows? I don't refer to anybody. <laughs> in their 9 p.m. shows. How can you say this on a national television? <laughs> what is national television? <laughs> now, a very competent, very competent Udipi-based paper columnist or television presenter just cannot muster that courage to say, how can you say what? You know, he comes to Dr. Balal and says, if he says sit down, he won't give his state to sit down. But the so-called national guy, you know, he stands <laughs> He's a national guy. A publication that is headquartered in London or New York is international. Therefore, we have an unwritten rule of hierarchy. UDP communication is inferior to Bengaluru, Bengaluru communication is inferior to Delhi, and Delhi communication is inferior to New York or London. <laughs> inferior, not in quality or dependability or reliability, inferior in status. I will extend this a bit further by, by bringing in language. Language adds another dimension. If you sit in Delhi and edit a Punjabi paper, it's not national, just because it's in Delhi. It is still a regional one. Whereas, you can sit and yell from Bangalore or Mumbai in English and call yourself and earn the badge of national, isn't it? You bring out a publication in Kannada from San Francisco Bay Area, three quadrant. What is it? Is it global? It's national. International? No, it's not. It's Kannada, it's local. So there is a hierarchy, an unwritten hierarchy. When communication that is institutionalized is hierarchical and has inferior and superior status and has a pecking order, you can imagine what is the fate of the communication that is outside the pale, outside the hierarchy. I am talking about the, the, the hierarchy of the institutions, the charities, governments, newspapers, etc. etc. I am not talking about the mass. Even within the pale, even within the approved hierarchies also, there is status, inferior and superior. Most of the communication of the masses is unwritten and oral. Therefore, it is not at the high table. It is not organized. Therefore, it is probably noise and not communication. Until it distills into a palpable and recognizable outcome, it is not considered 
as communication. For instance, there is a resentment, there is restlessness or dissent that is not written or videographed or audio recorded, is not communicated until because of, the, of this resentment, unwritten resentment, unspoken resentment, unrepresented resentment on the video or audio or radio, whatever, until a party is voted out, hundreds of people gather to shout or they struck work or vandalized. Till then, that's no communication. It's not considered communication. You don't admit that into the court of communication. It's outside the hierarchy. It's not considered. Nobody takes note of the communication of the masses before it spills over to the streets. Communication experts don't have their ear to the ground. This is the point I'm trying to we want to communicate to them, not get their communication. We perhaps had no tools to get their communication so far, earlier. But more importantly, we hardly cared. We didn't bother. We were more interested in communicating to them. We are trained to talk and show not to listen and see. We are trained, or what do we do? What are we training? We are training, we are trained to talk. We are trained to take a video and show them. We are trained to record an audio and make them hear. We are not trained to listen to them, to see them, to understand. But now we have the tools to listen and to see. What we need is the conviction to listen and see. A member of the crowd is not barred by the blue pencil anymore. You know what is a blue pencil? You don't know what is a blue pencil. It's in the trade of journalism. A blue pencil is another term for the interspan. You can say, not this, don't publish this, revise that, this is thrown out, okay, you can admit this. That is called, an editor reads it, what is called a blue pencil. That's all. It's not really a blue pencil, but you know, MV Garment had a blue pencil. A member of the crowd is not barred anymore by the blue pencil, not hindered by the expensive means of expression. There are devices that facilitate one's communication from here to anywhere and from anywhere to here. Masses have begun to communicate digitally. They are not bound in space by atoms, they are now unbound <laughs> by digits. A member of the mass doesn't say to you, the expert, the professional. Till a while ago, what they said became a communication only if they said it to you, the expert or the professional. or the expert or the professional noticed what they said. But now, they say it to themselves. They say it to themselves. Note to self. They are saying it. Although it is a note to self, it is what? It is a communication to everybody. To each other. To strangers or say just something aloud, perhaps specifically to nobody, they just say. But 
how we list as professionals. The point here is they are communicating. The question is, are we listening? Are we giving place to that communication? Are we breaking the barriers of hierarchy? Are we prepared to? Do we think that it is necessary to break the hierarchy and to listen? Or are we trying to use the tools, the same tools, that are breaking the hierarchies to continue the asymmetry and perpetuate the hierarchies? I want you to understand, I want you to ponder about this. Are we trying to use the tools that are breaking hierarchies to continue the asymmetry and perpetuate the hierarchies? Some of us indeed do. Cambridge Analytica perhaps did that. Why did they do it? They did it to reinforce, reproduce the hierarchy, not to break it. They tried to listen to what the masses talked and said in order to devise means to influence them or manipulate them. To tell them what they wanted to hear, to package the message to their liking and to alter their minds. In what way is it qualitatively different from what has been happening all these years? You know, it is like this. Atom was split. Before it was deployed for good purpose, it was used for evil and destructive purpose. We are familiar with that story. I don't have to go into the details. When atom could be misused, mis misusing digit is not unthinkable. In fact, it is much easier. Countries have arsenals of atomic weapons. Now political groups have armies of digital warriors. Are you familiar with it? We need to guard against them. Schools such as yours have a role to play in this. It is tempting to join one digital army or the other. They pay you well. In the name of ideology, belief, progress, dedication to leaders or some such reason. Prevention of the misuse of digit is yet to be recognized as a major mission and an objective. Flipping the communication coin is the first step. Not to simply hand down the communication to the masses, but to be at the receiving end of the communication of the masses is the second step. We need to cultivate that. Deliberately cultivate that. I would like to conclude with a note of caution. We are steeped in a culture that teaches us that good and truth ultimately win. It has lodged itself firmly in our subconscious. Satyam Evajayati. Perhaps every culture has it in some form or the other. And every religion teaches that. While this belief gives rise to optimism <coughs> that I am fighting for good and I will win. Ultimately, I will win. Ultimately, truth triumphs, dharma triumphs. It gives optimism. It also has the capacity to make large sections of people indifferent to the battle between good and evil and between truth and falsehood.
they don't participate okay jit jayega don't go away and i can do my own routine good will shine what is there they don't take sides because they tend to believe that somehow good and truth will ultimately triumph over evil and falsehood whether they fight on their side or not good and truth are inherently so strong that they don't need our little might there is a danger that that kind of a thinking lulls us into inaction and indifference to take the side of good and truth to fight on their side it is important that we begin by being at the receiving end of the communication of the masses not perpetuate the asymmetry of the masses as consumers and communication that we hand down to them how do we do that how do we do that I have not come with an answer. That is the question I thought I should leave that with you today, friend. That's for you. I've raised it. I don't want a 9 p.m. TV debate to decide on this question. I want an institution that was founded by someone like M. V. Kamak to deliberate and settle. we need to stop outsourcing our thought leadership to screaming tv presenters and editors who hurry up to put their tomorrow's edition before the deadlines this and the related questions deserve much better minds to handle i expect such minds here in this august institution and in the august gathering I wish you all the best in your lives and careers. Thank you very much for your time.